I'm Paul Vinzani, and I'm going to be working with you to cover topics related to tendon pathology, nerve pathology, and brachial plexus pathology uh, that really kind of lump under the topic of cumulative trauma disorders. And that is a funny topic. That's a very interesting term. Let's look at that term for a moment. And basically what, we're do what you're looking at here is the, is the premise of how people perceive pain over time. No two people perceive and respond to pain in the same way. Um, pain has multiple, uh, multiple presentations. Uh, a person of cultural, of different cultures are going to respond differently to pain. Uh, people, it, pain that's uh, compensated versus pain that is non-compensated are going to cause people to make different decisions. Pain will result in different uh, illness behaviors. Pain sometimes results in depression. So think about this as being a cyclical problem. Now, many of us are familiar with PNF patterns or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation patterns. Um, and we do those traditionally with weights or with therabands. But I, I actually like doing them with weighted uh, medicine balls. It, it brings more of the entire body into the position. It makes it more functional. Um, and it allows the patient to develop strength and endurance in, in combination with movements of the trunk. So we're gonna have uh, Mandy demonstrate uh, for you a couple of these uh, different patterns of movement. Ready? So a little bit of a dip. Tighten in your core now. Come on, tuck in your belly. There you go. And come up to me and think about rotation. What you want to think about is, like a PNF pattern, you want the patient to rotate. You want the patient to come back and rotate to you. You may need to cue them a little bit like I'm cueing Mandy right now. Maybe you'd be lucky enough to have a patient like Mandy to cue. It'd be great. She's so easy to teach. Most of our patients are not, as you well know. There we go. There you are. And you can emphasize a little bit more rotation. You can emphasize a little bit more elevation, depending on what the patient needs functionally. Uh, one of the things that, if you notice, I cued her for was to tuck in her belly. One of the ways to control the core here is to have the person try to suck their belly away from their pants, pants their, their, their pant or their belt buckle. Um, you tell the person, bring your belly button away from your belt buckle. Tuck it in. There you go. Now do that movement. And if you're worried about core training, in addition, you can kind of maintain a finger here or a hand here for, for feedback to see if she loses it. Like right there. <laughs> okay? And relax. Now, the second test we would always do is flexocarpi radialis. To do flexocarpi radialis properly, I like to take the elbow out into full extension. Okay? So a little bit more extension there like that. Here we go, and I hold the patient, and what you're gonna ask for is wrist flexion. Now, a little subtlety here that I think will help you. Take your fingers and put them on, I'm gonna show you this little area right here. Take your fingers and hold the second metacarpal. You wanna hold the second metacarpal. Flexor carpi radialis inserts into the base of second metacarpal. So a good way to resist flexor carpi radialis is to make a little cradle out of your fingers. You wanna make a little thumb on top, index finger on the bottom, take that cradle and p position it around the second metacarpal and have the person flex their wrist. Elbow a little straighter if you couldn't answer. Let me get your oh. elbow a little straighter. There you go. Hold that wrist flexion and don't let me pull. And you're looking for it to reproduce pain right in this area. Second pa place that people make uh, a, a significant amount of uh, reportage of pain or a, a significant amount of uh, a problem that's related to the uh, li lateral epicondyle would be the into what's commonly called the radial tunnel, but really is the extensor carpi radialis breve, uh, ex excuse me, the extensor digitorum commonus muscle belly, which would be here. So it would be lateral epicondyle, extensor carpi radialis brevis, and then radial tunnel region extensor digitorum commonus, muscle belly. Final place of consideration would be coming back to the lateral epicondyle and moving slightly posterior to the lateral epicondyle. And this area is the muscle belly of the Ancaneus. And many pa people will complain of pain in this region with elbow flexion. To me, that's indicative of problems in the Ancaneus muscle belly. If after conservative management, your patient were to go on to having surgery, there are certain co post-operative considerations that, that, that it's gonna be important to the therapist. Before we go through those considerations, 
Let's take a look at what's involved in the surgery. Let's use our hand model here to, to show you what's involved in the surgery. The transverse carpal ligament is this thickened fascial structure right here. And the surgeon would either openly or endoscopically release this through a, a surgical incision. Once this is released, and I'm going to pull this back as a flap now, once this is released, the median nerve, which is this yellow structure right here in our model, is released from its compressed bed and is allowed to move freely in the, in the, uh, it, in the carpal canal. The person, um, postoperatively, typically does not really have a significant amount of problems, but there are four, uh, there are four problems that can persist that might result in the person coming to you for therapy. I want to put our little fascia back here now um, just to show you uh, a little bit of what those problems could be. The first and most common complication of carpal tunnel syndrome, of car of carpal tunnel syndrome surgery is pillar pain. 